so did. So did the spectacle work on the most prosaic levels of everyday life? Excuse me, that's not a question. So did. So did the spectacle work on the most prosaic levels of everyday life, but Debord meant much more. As a theater, the spectacle was also a church. Quote, the material reconstruction of the religious illusion, end of quote. Modern mastery, the domination of nature by technology, the potential abolition of the domain of necessity in the modern society of abundance, had not, quote, dispelled the religious clouds where men had placed their own powers, detached from themselves. It has only anchored them to an earthly base, end of quote. This earthly base was modern capitalism, an economic mode of being that by the 1950s had expanded far beyond the mere production of obvious necessities and luxuries. Having satisfied the needs of, needs of the body, capitalism as spectacle turned to the desires of the soul. It turned upon individual men and women, seized their subjective emotions and experiences, changed those once evanescent phenomena into objective replicable commodities, placed them on the market, set their prices, and sold them back to those who had once brought emotions and experiences out of themselves, to people who, as prisoners of the spectacle, could now find such things only on the market. It was these special commodities, items whose objective form served as a disguise for their subjective content, the suit that wore status, the LP that played identity, which rose into the heaven of the spectacle. Here, a miracle as strange as that claimed by any religion was repeated again and again every day. What was once yourself was now presented as an unreachable but irresistibly alluring image of what in this best of all possible worlds, you could be. In such a world, one finally consumed no, no ordinary sort of thing but oneself, which, now removed into the material reconstruction of the religious illusion, where you had placed your own powers detached from yourself, was experienced as other, as a thing. Marxists located alienation in the workplace, where what the worker produced was taken from him. De Bord believed that material abundance and technical mastery had, for the first time in history, permitted all people to consciously produce themselves. But in place of that radical freedom, he found only its image, the spectacle, in which every act was alienated from itself. Here, what one was taken away, here, what one was, was taken away. This was the modern world. To the degree that the real field of freedom had expanded, so had the epistemology, the aesthetics, the politics, and the social life control, the social life of control. In August 1980, the Union Solidarity emerged out of the linen shipyards in Dansk, Poland. As an idea and a fact of freedom, solidarity soon spread across the country, from factories to farms, from clerks to intellectuals, infecting even the armed forces and the bureaucracy of the Soviet client state that had ruled Poland since 1944. Quote, what we find in the people's democracies, end of quote, Polish emigre, Szczesław Milos wrote in 1953 in The Captive Mind, quote, is a conscious mass play. After long acquaintance with his role, a man grows into it so closely that he can no longer differentiate his true self from the self he simulates. So that even the most intimate of individuals speak to each other in party slogans, 
To identify oneself with the role one is obliged to play brings relief and permits a relaxation of one's vigilance. End of quote. But if everyday life in communist Poland was a play, then Solidarity, the clandestine Polish publisher Szczesław Bielecki, wrote in an essay smuggled out of prison in 1985, was anti-theater. For the first time, countless men and women spoke in public for themselves and were listened to. They acted and found themselves changed into new men and women, unwilling to go on as before. Against Solidarity's affirmation of the right of all Polish citizens to reinvent their own society, the ruling clique was purged, replaced by a government promising reforms unthinkable only months earlier. Suddenly, almost anything seemed possible. Despite the threat of Soviet intervention, an air of good feeling rose out of the new milieu of danger and desire. And on the night of 16 December 1980, once more in Dansk, the leaders of Solidarity, the new government, and the Catholic Church gathered with 150,000 new citizens to seal the moment. The occasion was the dedication of a monument to the martyrs of December 1970. Striking workers massacred by government troops until the birth of Solidarity, those men had been excluded from the official history of their society, their names mentioned only in secret. Now their names were read out by a movie star, and in three steel crosses, each 140 feet high, they were made to symbolize their society. Quote, for those who watched the ceremony, it was all incredible, improbable, end of quote. Neil Asherson wrote in the Polish August, quote, it was a moment in which one realized how much had taken place in Poland and how rapidly, end of quote. And yet, he said, for, quote, all its splendor, there was something alienating about the ceremony at Dansk. Andrzej Wajda, the most famous filmmaker in Eastern Europe, produced and directed it. With all its use of lighting, of sound, of music, of the solo human voice. It was indeed a spectacle. The ordinary people who had brought all these things about by asserting their right to be subjects as well as objects of history now stood in darkness and watched the show as if they were watching a film. Once they intervened, when Tudus Fitzbach the Dansk Party Secretary spoke of Poland's liberation in 1944 by the Red Army. A soft breeze of whistles ran across the crowd. But for the rest, they were passive. De Board had been there long before with words that might with words that were meant to describe the performance of a commute or a night of lovemaking as precisely as they anticipated such a broken public event as Dansk on 16 December 1980. Quote, the alienation of the spectator to the profit of the contemplated object, end of quote. One's idealized self or any piece of it, quote, can be summed up thusly, end of quote, he wrote in 1967, quote, the more he contemplates, the less he lives. The more he accepts recognizing himself in the dominant images of need, the less he understands his own existence and his own desires. The externality of the spectacle in relation to the active man appears in the fact that his gestures are no longer his own, but those of another who represents them to him. And that another was the spectacle personified, the star of social life, be it Lech Walesa, the leader of solidarity, or the martyrs of 1970, or Jesus Christ or the face on the billboard as one made one's commute, the face of the idealized self in one's mind as one made love. As such, the idealized self was always immediately present, always just out of reach. As a perversion of freedom, it was, like any perversion, erotic. As alienation, it carried the frizzen of having just missed the brass ring, a sensation that always brought one back for more. If at bottom revolution was rooted in the desire to create one's own life, 
a wish so deep and voracious, its realization demanded the creation of a new society. Then the spectacle took that wish into itself and returned it as the wish to accept one's life as it already existed, as it existed in the constantly renewing utopia of the spectacle. And this is a quote from the San Francisco Chronicle, 28 August, 1985. A scream swept across a dusty field packed with teenagers bristling with black leather, chains and tortured hair, quote, prohibit work, prohibit pay, end of quote, was the cry, quote, people are dying, end of quote. Thus began the final concert of the Harrison Rock Music Festival, a celebration of loud guitars, exotic styles and aggressive alienation. Some 20,000 youth traveled here this month to party, camp and cheer bands who sang of hopelessness, aimlessness, and fear of nuclear war. Such themes blared out from this town in Poland's rich Midwestern farmlands for five long nights to the bemusement of both communist authorities and emissaries of the Roman Catholic Church. Bands performed under such names as Jail, Trial, and Dead Scab Formation. Now back to the book proper. Spectacle. Spectacle had become a fashionable, critical commonplace by the early 80s. It was a vague term devoid of ideas. It simply meant that the image of a thing superseded the thing itself. Critics used the cliche not to think or to imagine, but to complain. To complain that people seemed to believe that through Rambo movies, the USA could win the Vietnam War backward. That consumers were being seduced by advertisements instead of choosing rationally among products that citizens were voting for actors rather than issues. This was the theater, but DeBoard had insisted on the church. The spectacle was not merely advertising or television, it was a world. Quote, the spectacle is not a collection of images, he wrote, dismissing in advance the obvious social critiques that would follow his book, but a social relationship among people mediated by images, end of quote. It was a social world in which to be nothing was to be everything, in which to be everything was to be nothing. Sadat was a hero of the electronic revolution, Mohammed Heichel wrote in Autumn of Fury, the assassination of Sadat, but also its victim. When his face was no longer to be seen on the television screen, it was as if the 11 years of his rule had vanished with a switch of the control knob. The contradiction was a tautology, and the tautology was the prison. The spectacle defined reality in the modern world, and that definition defined unreality. When everything that was directly lived had moved away into a representation, there was no real life, yet no other life seemed real. The victory of the spectacle was that nothing seemed real until it had appeared in the spectacle. Even if in the moment of its appearance, it would lose whatever reality it held. Quote, every notion fixed in this way is ultimately based in its passage into its opposite. End of quote, DeBoard wrote. Quote, the true is a moment of the faults, end of quote. DeBoard had trumpeted the spectacle as a monster, a horror movie, a Godzilla of alienation. 20 years after he set down his theory of modern society, its premises sound both familiar and weird, plain and paranoid obvious and occult. And this is what it felt like to be part of the world of Michael Jackson in 1984. It was to be loosed from your moorings, to feel simultaneously humiliated and excited, to respond to the claim that even, quote, the true is a moment of the false, end of quote, with a shrug, quote, well, why not? What else can you show me? End of quote. The spectacle produced its own opposition and swallowed it. To reject one spectacle was to demand another. What happened in the year of Michael Jackson? For the first few million who bought thriller, form and content, subjectivity and objectivity, self and other, commodity and consumer were one. Those few million bought a record they liked. Then thriller became an image, an image in the milieu of modern capitalism, in the heaven of the spectacle of the good, an irresistible image of self-realization and public conquest. After that, form superseded content. 
which did not mean that Jackson's message was lost in Thriller's gloss. It meant that neither form nor content remained tied to the record itself. The content was no longer the sound of the music, and the form was no longer the manner in which the music was produced or functioned as genre. The content was now one's, was now one's response to the social event of Thriller, the form, the mechanics of the event. To DeBoard, the society of the spectacle was modern society itself. In no way natural and interested construction, but nonetheless implacably complete. Quote, reality rises up within the spectacle and the spectacle is real, end of quote. As it emerged out of the pop milieu, the symbol factory, one could see Thriller as a spectacle of, of the spectacle. A mediation between the pop spectacle and the greater spectacle that Thriller seemed to prove was social life. The Sex Pistols had forced people to choose. In the beginning for or against the Sex Pistols. Then, should one enter Johnny Rotten's performances to say yes or no to God and the state, work and leisure, the performer and oneself? The triumph of Michael Jackson was to allow people not to choose. Thriller enforced its own reality principle. It was there, a part of every commute, a serenade to every errand, a referent to every purchase, a fact of everyday life. You didn't have to like it. You only had to acknowledge it. But somehow, in the year of Michael Jackson, to acknowledge it was to like it. In 1982. In 1982, Elizabeth Taylor filed suit to stop the airing of an unauthorized TV movie about her life. I am my own industry, she said. I am my own commodity. 115 years before, Karl Marx anticipated this bizarre invocation in, quote, the fetishism of the commodity and its secret, end of quote. The most bizarrely titled section of Capital. He wrote, a commodity appears at first sight an extremely obvious, trivial thing. But its analysis brings out that it is a very strange thing, abounding in metaphysical subtleties and theological niceties. It is absolutely clear that by his activity, man changes the forms of the materials of nature in such a way as to make them useful to him. The form of wood, for instance, is altered if a table is made out of it. Nevertheless, the table continues to be wood. An ordinary, sensuous thing. But as soon as it emerges as a commodity, it changes into a thing which transcends sensuousness. It not only stands with its feet on the ground, but in relation to all other commodities, it stands on its head and evolves out of its wooden brain grotesque ideas. Far more wonderful than, it, than if it were to begin dancing of its own free will. This is pure poetry, but the mystical echoes were not there for color. Marx's allusion was to the spiritualists, who in his time clasped hands around tables from Boston to Paris to Petrograd, waiting for the spirits of departed love one makes to their presence known. Waiting for the spirits of departed loved ones to make their presence known, to shake the tables, to make the tables dance. The spiritualists had nothing to do with commodities, but the commodity had everything to do with magic, a magic in which the technical notion of transformation yielded to the metaphysical subtleties and theological niceties of transubstantiation. Still, if it is possible that in 1867 Marx could have foreseen a post-industrial Taylorism, it is hard to believe he would have been ready for Jacksonism. This is another quote from the San Francisco, San Francisco Chronicle, 20 August, 1987. An Illinois woman has filed a $150 million paternity suit against pop star Michael Jackson, claiming that he is the father of her three children, she said yesterday. Michael is the father. Michael got me pregnant and I want Michael to pay for it, Billie Jean Jackson, 39, said by telephone from a friend's home in Hanover Park, a Chicago suburb. The Illinois Department of Children and Family Services took custody of the children in 1985, charging the mother with lack of supervision. The children live in New York with the mother's relatives. 
Department officials refused to comment on the case, but sources said Billie Jean Jackson, who legally changed her name from LaVon Paulus, has made previous claims that other famous personalities fathered her children. None had resulted in a paternity suit, however. Now back to the book proper. The commodity was the agent of reification. Jackson's built its own heaven, and everyone reached for it. It was wonderful in that year of Michael Jackson just to get up in the morning, open the paper, and follow the dance to discover that a clandestine Michael Jackson cult had formed within the Jehovah's Witnesses, which, as everyone knew, counted Jackson as a devotee, and which, one was informed, was based on a belief in the return of the Archangel, Archangel Mar Michael. To learn that a teenager, his parents having refused him the money to correct his face so that it might more closely resemble Michael Jackson's, had killed himself. Or to read that the American companies operating in Mexico, quote, have begun to subsidize food and transportation and to pay workers above the Mexima Mexican minimum wage of four eighty a day. $4.80 a day. One company is considering giving watches to workers with good attendance and longevity records. Another is giving out Michael Jackson albums, end of quote. But these were only teasers. Suddenly, it was time to make the specter flash. Time for a tour at $30 a head. Now, the news was hard, and the news breaks never stopped. Jackson's father and brothers left behind so long before. Forcing him to go before a public he had preferred not to meet, various would-be promoters fighting for the right to meet the Jacksons' demand for a $40 million guarantee, the suspense over which cities would be visited and which passed over. And finally, the stipulation that whoever wished to attend a Jackson's concert would be required to purchase by mail order no less than four tickets for $120 with no assurance that the order would result in entry since 10 orders were expected for every available ticket. Meaning that while those who lost would eventually have their money refunded minus the service charge, it would in the meantime be held and invested in three month notes with all accumulated interest reverting to the Jacksons. This was real life, dollars and cents. It was also a version of what Ulrich Meinhof called consume terror, the terror of consumption, the fear of not being able to get what is on the market, the agony of being last in line or of lacking the money to join the line to be a part of social life. All over the country, people became happily afraid of tickets they could not afford to buy of tickets they might not be able to buy even if they could afford them, of tickets that would seal them as everything or nothing, of tickets that, as the humiliating, exciting process began, were not even on sale. <laughs>